This teaching is brought to you by Christian Family Church International. Well, come on, lift your voice and make some noise for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on! No, come on, CFC, lift your voice and give the biggest shout of praise to the one that is worthy, the one that is above every other name. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, that's like a three out of ten. Okay, we're going to try that again because we're going to go some places today. It's a great honor. Let me first say to be here today, I want to honor uh, Apostle Theo in his absence. I have the greatest admiration, greatest respect for you. Thank you for the great privilege to minister here today. And uh, I know God is going to touch your men. And uh, I just want to say to you, Thank you for touching my life like 38 years ago as one of the true apostles that come from this country. We want to honor you from South Africa. So let's put our hands together for Apostle Theo Volmerans today. Come on. And then Pastor Johnny Slobbert, Dr. Johnny Slobbert. What a great honor to be here. You're a faithful, a loyal man. We thank God for you and for your leadership in this church. Come on, let's give the Lord a big praise. And then Apostle Nikki. Okay, some house rules. Okay, I know you are tired. It's been a long morning. But there's no amen in the session. Okay? So we're going to go from an amen to a hurrah. Come on, let's try it. One, two, three, say... No amen. Because we're going to stir up some testosterone here today, okay? We're going to be comfortable in our skin as men today. We're going to stop living with apology. We're going to stop living with regret. We're going to stop living defined by what the world says about us. We are male by birth, but you are a man by choice. Today... You are going to leave this place ignited by the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost. Today, God is going to restore the roar in your heart today in Jesus' name. Give somebody a high five and, 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 and say hurrah or whatever you want to say. How many of you like being men? And the rest of you, how many of you like yourself? Ah. Huh? You know, I'm on a mission. Uh, I've been in the church for 38 years. One of the things I do is to tell men to be men. Because it's in the church very often men lose their identity. Because the role the women play in the church. And we thank God for the women. But we are not women. So we don't walk like women. We don't praise like women. We don't pray like women. We are comfortable to be men. Say amen or, or hurrah today. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, these men out there that when they walk into a church and everything is like, it's like a female environment that dominates the space, those men won't come back. I have people in our church that have never raised their hands once, but they have financed every project. I have people that don't jump up and down in church on a Sunday, but they are men of their word. They are men of integrity. So we want to be men that can change things in our world. We want to be who God created us to be. So my message today, very, very quickly, in two hours, is to restore the roar. I understand that Pastor Theo, uh, Apostle Theo said, that you don't have to roar to be a lion. But I'll tell you something about a lion. A lion knows how to roar and he knows when to roar. And if a lion is wounded and he lies under a tree, he loses his roar. And at some point that lion begins to find himself again. And some of you have lost your roar. You have lost who God created you to be. And we are going to deal with that. 
I'm going to ignite the roar back in your heart. Whatever you have lost, God is going to come today and he's going to restore the roar in your heart today. You are going to leave this place as a mighty warrior. You are going to leave this place as a mighty man of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? Because the world tells you who you are not. The world tries to steal your identity. And often in the church, it's the same. The more spiritual men become, the less masculine they are. Now, I understand spirituality, but we should not apologize to be men. That's why I like talking to men. Walk like a man, talk like a man, smell like a, no, um, put on some deodorant. But be a man. Be a man. Not you, you lose yourself. Because um, when you become a, a, a Christian or a spiritual person, suddenly you become domesticated. You become civilized. Amazing that Peter walks with Jesus Christ for three and a half years and Jesus never disarms him. He never took his masculinity away from him. When the servant came of the high priest, when they came to capture him, he still had his sword with him. Listen, too many men has, have been disarmed by society disarmed by the lies and the deceptions of what is out there in the world, by this woke move and every other thing, trying to take the identity away from men. Because let me tell you, I thank God for strong women, but if the men is strong, the church will be strong. And all the brothers say, So it is now weer tijd om baas te word in die huis. Te lang was jy klaas. I can speel with you, see, but my humor in my ears. You don't know me, so everything I say, some of the things I say might not be uh, uh, um, whatever. But, you know, when we're on the platform and we dance, can we dance like men? When we walk from point A to B, can we walk like men? Jesus never came to tame you. He never came to turn you from a racehorse into a, a tame donkey. And, 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 and many men, when, when, when they come to Christ, it's like they lose something. You should lose something. You should be stronger, braver, bolder, more assertive, more sure of yourself. Not you follow Christ now and you almost live with apology. And you always live seeking permission. No. You need to know who you are, and you need to rise up in who God created you to be, in your manhood. You need to be comfortable to be a man of God. This is who God made me to be. This is who I was before I got saved. After I get saved, I don't become refined. I don't become domesticated. Listen to me. God chose Paul for a reason, because Paul was a no-nonsense person. And I'll show you from the Bible, because we have this picture of Jesus Christ that he is the spasty, gaunty-looking savior with a white robe, with a few butterflies in the background, with a little sheep under his arm, and he almost likes big people to follow him. Well, that's not your savior. That's not the Christ. We portray Jesus as weak. We were taught to sing the song, they are weak, but he is strong. So we act weak. And we think when we are weak, it's okay. Or we look for a reason for our weakness. I'll tell you that God designed you a certain way. God created you a certain way. God designed you with your testosterone. God created you to be a mighty man, a mighty warrior. God created you to be an overcomer. It's in your DNA. It's not something that comes with the anointing. It's something that you are born with. It's why you'll see a little boy takes anything and turns it into a weapon. When you played with your sister's doll, 10 to 1, you broke the doll's neck, right? Because that's who you are. You're not created by God, and I'll say it again, to be this sophisticated, fit into society person. And I only have one hour to talk to you. So... Um, David, the perfect example, he's a worshiper and he's a warrior. I want to talk about the warrior aspect, okay? That as men, we have to be 
assertive in who we are. We have to be comfortable in who God created us to be. And we have to rise out of whatever is stopping us from being the men that God created us to be. I need to love myself. I need to believe in myself. I need to be sure of myself. I need to be confident in myself. Yes, it comes from God. But there are people that live this way without God. Then you get people in church very often that act weak and act as victims because they don't know who they are. So let's read Joel chapter 3 verse 9. The Bible says, Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Everybody say prepare for war. Say it. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Now remember Joel chapter 3 is written after Joel chapter 2. That's after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Then God calls for the church, the men, the mighty men to be awakened. Because without men standing up, nothing is going to change in society. While we do the feel-good Christianity, we will not do good. If good men say and do nothing, evil will prevail. We are facing many challenges in South Africa. We are facing injustice, crime, poverty. Women are not safe in South Africa. We are the guardians. We don't have to feel anointed. We are the guardians. We are the safe keepers. We are the protectors of society. That's how God made us to be. We don't have to pray about something uh, beside the road when there's something wrong. We have to stop our car get out of the car and man up like we do. As a church, we've taken thousands of people out of human trafficking. Pastor Andre Lomot here with us. And let me tell you, we don't go pray for those, 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 uh, those traffickers. We don't go pray for those drug dealers. If I tell you what we do, some of you will think we are not saved. But I say this with tongue in cheek. I say to many of my pastors, I don't want you fully saved. Because when you become fully saved, many people become useless as spit. We, 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 we need the brothers like Donnie and we need the brothers like JP. We need the brothers not to come and sit in church and sing gentle Jesus, meek and mild, look upon this little child. We need, we need that, that, that what they have and we need them in the campaign of Christ. We need them to come with us and go practice your slapping contest on the drug dealers. Come with us and go practice your martial arts on, on the human trafficker. Come with us. And practice your martial arts on the child molester. Then we'll get the pastors to come after three days in ICU to pray for them and resurrect them. Hey! But we need some men in the church of God that will rise up and say enough is enough. Something has to be done. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, you rape a girl, we're not going to talk to you. We're going to chop it off. You don't need prayer, you need to lose privilege. I sat with the Minister of Justice years ago. I said, we need a campaign in South Africa, chop it off. He said, how can you say that, Pastor? Well, he asked me exactly the same. He said, how can you say that as a pastor? I said, because you will not as, a, as, as the Minister of Justice. You chop 300 men's thing off, rape will stop in South Africa. And we'll, we'll do it surgically. We will get it off so women and children can be safe. We have prayed for 30 years, and we are the rape capital of South Africa. It's time to go on a campaign. It's time for righteous men to go on a campaign. It's time for people to stand up in society and to deal with what has to be dealt with. Can you say hoorah today? Come on. So we, we, we take the guys that get saved out of the clubs and pubs, etc., and we put them in a different ministry. We disciple them, but we play to their strength so that they don't lose themselves. Like many people that have been saved for 30 years, and, and, and all they can do is, Shandai, Hundai, tie my bow tie, I'm anointed, I feel anointed, but they do nothing. The church is not yet to try and get you more spiritual. You are as spiritual as you will be. The church is yet to get you involved in God's purpose. 
to get you off your backside, I mean your, your blessed assurance, and to get you into the fight. A fight that shows you. Look, we're talking to men, right? There's no estrogen here. So let's say it as it is. And if it offends you, my brother, you've been taking estrogen spiritual tablets, and it's time to get rid of your spiritual estrogen. Get back to your spiritual testosterone in who God created you to be. That you are a man. That you are a man and nothing can change that. And not only that, you are a man of God and you should roar against the injustices of society and change this world in Jesus' name. 30 years later after election, the poor are poorer than ever. Nothing has reformed in South Africa and all the church does is pray. Well, we've prayed enough. Yeah, I'll say it again. Because in COVID, I saw all pastors do is pray and do nothing. I think you put some of them through an x-ray machine, you won't find a spine. They become like spiritual jellyfish formless. We are engaged in the ba- greatest battle that this world has ever seen. Greater than the First World War, greater than the Second World War. We are engaged for the battle for the soul of humanity. And every man should engage in this war. This Christianity is not about how good you feel. This Christianity that comes from the West that has taught you that everything is about you is a deception. Because everything about your life is not about you. It's so that God can use you to make this world a better place, a safer place, so that you can change this world as a man of God. Amen? I almost caught you there. uh, Look, my brother, I'm a man, okay? I don't apologize for it. Stop looking at me with those eyes filled with estrogen, please. And trying to discern me spiritually. I've done this 38 years. My fruits speak. Get off your high horse or fall off your chair. Thank you. Time to listen and just to open your ears. Because if, 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 if what we did worked, South Africa would be a better place for all. So every time there's a crisis, all the people say is, we have to pray. I say, and then? And then, where's the reform? Where are the reformers? Where are those that are willing to be unpopular? Where are the spiritual activists? Where are those that will go beyond feelings and goosebumps to reform society? To deal with this giant of poverty in South Africa, which is the greatest indictment against this nation. That we have 40% of people in unemployment and we have uh, uh, more than 50% of our people live in poverty. And we want to come to church on a Sunday and sing hallelujah. And we want a goosebump and feel good. And right on our doorstep, people are going to hell. Right on our doorstep, people are perishing. Little girls are getting raped, etc. And all we can think about is making more money. All we can think about is how better we can feel about ourselves and our ego. That's not okay, my brother. We need a wake-up call. I said we need a wake-up call. We need a wake-up call. We need a wake-up call. We need to become the hell in with the devil. We need to become the hell in with hell. We have to be activated. Something has to activate on the inside of us because we've become passive. And our service is reduced to coming to a service on a Sunday while the world is going to hell. The other Bible is very clear. After Joel chapter 2, he says, wake up the mighty man. Prepare for war. Beat your plowshares into spears and your pruning hooks into swords. It means you better change your attitude. You better become a man of war. You better understand that your life is more about you. Sometimes you don't choose the fight. The fight chooses you. And when that fight chooses you, my brother, you can't put your tail between your legs and run away from the fight because another generation will be enslaved because of your apathy. 
there's a fight. There's a giant. And we are the generation alive. We are those standing between the living and the dead. So we have to get rid of this feel-good Christianity and get to the place of being the mighty men of, almost I said, women and women, the mighty men of God. Come on, somebody jump to your feet and shout, Hurrah, give the Lord a praise. Come on. Oh, give him a praise. Come on in Jesus' name. Yeah. You say, what's he doing? Some of you have lost your roar. You just have to begin to grunt again. Feel like a lion. Feel like a lion. Wake up. Feel like a lion. Get rid of your excuses. Get rid of your apathy. Get rid of your, your, your victim mindset. And remind yourself of who you are. A mighty man, born for this hour, born for purpose. When you, when, when you sign up for that purpose, you'll be strong. So he says, beat your plowshares into swords, your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say what? Say it. No, say it. Lift your hand like this and say it. Why? Because weak men do nothing. Yes, we are strong in the grace of the Lord. Yes, Paul said, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. But Paul didn't say, when I'm weak, I stay weak. He said, when I'm weak, I'm strong. God commands Joshua three times to be strong and courageous. It's not an option, my brother. You have to get up out of that ditch. You have to lift yourself up out of that valley of discouragement. You have to pick yourself up when you fall. You have to get yourself back into the house of God. You are a man. God will not say to you to do something if you cannot do it. It's in your DNA as a man. Listen. Finally, my brethren, not my sestren. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. It's amazing how this Bible addresses men more does women. I would that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands. I'm not taking women out of the equation, but a church full of women and no strong men will accomplish nothing. You say it sounds like a, a male chauvinist. No, I'm not. Women are created equal to us, but not only created above us, and they're not created in our place. And uh, we are who we are. And I watch men, because I'm a man. I watch how strong men are uncomfortable in doing this charismatic praise dances. No, no, no. And then we make them feel it's unspiritual. I don't care how you jump, do the right thing. Even if you never lift your hand, that's okay. As long as you do what God places in your heart. Amen. I know when you grow spiritually, your hands will go up and all those kind of things. But, but I'll tell you the honest truth. I've pastored 38 years. And I have men in our church still. I'm talking about ex springbok rugby players, sportsmen, etc., if you say raise your hands, they do it like this. You say they're not committed to God. Man, they financed every building project. I'd rather have that person than El Flaco jumping up and down, rolling around, goosebump person that never does anything for God's kingdom. I'd rather have that person that says, count on me. We a man's word is still a man's word. Can you say, hurrah, we, 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 you can still count on that person to be who God created him to be. So in our purpose, God says we have to say as men. He says, wake up the mighty men. We have to say as men. We are strong. Beat your chest like this and say, I am strong. Say it. Say it. No, say it. Say it. I'm strong. Say it. Does it mean sometimes you don't feel weak? Yes, you do. But that's why the Bible says, say, I'm strong. And sometimes there's nobody to pray for you. You have to pray for yourself. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you come out of the clubs, but when you became a Christian, you lost your fight. Had no problem fighting in the clubs and the pubs. I was one of them. Then I got saved, and I saw how the church tried to change me into this churchified, whatever they think a Christian looks like. 
You have to be this gentle Jesus, almost like you have to, you know, pull your shoulders in and you have to, you know, have this spiritual look on your face and you have to just, I man, it's not real, man. If you sit on the toilet, you don't look like that. So why do you come to church? You ask a person now, he's, I'm blessed, my brother. Oh, please, man, please, go talk nonsense to somebody else. Well, praise God. Blessed be the Lord. Hosanna, integrity. Um, how are you? And I quote 10, I didn't ask you to quote 10 scriptures. I said, how's it, man? How's it? Because men don't talk a lot, do we? Ah. Huh? You can't be uncomfortable when I'm talking to you as a man. So let's not, let's not lose ourselves. It's very simple what I'm saying, but don't lose yourself. Don't look at everybody else that have lost themselves and you think, for me to be spiritual, I have to be like that flake. Because I'll tell you, that little girl that's being raped in the township doesn't care about your halo. And doesn't care about your, hallelujah, praise God, bless the Lord, amen, hallelujah. I'm not mocking that. I'm saying if you have that and you know help the child in the township, just stop it. If you've got a different religion, now it's a charismatic religion that meaneth nothing. If our prayer doesn't change us to go do something in the world, stop your prayer. Because your prayer is religious. You can't pray and not have God talk to you about somebody. Well, I'm growing deeper in the things of God. Then, you, then you'll grow deeper in reaching people. You cannot get close to God and not hear the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? So your God comes after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and he says, wake up the mighty men. Because here's the tendency for people when they get under the anointing, they fall asleep and go into a coma and they think it's spiritual. Nothing spiritual about falling over. What is spiritual is if you have a God encounter and you get up from the floor and you actually go forgive that person, you actually go pay that bill, you actually go reach out to that young child, you actually do what you should do as a man without a feeling. You just do what you have to do because that's who you are. Because it's easy to turn a move of God into a camping place. Well, God's not a camper, God's a mover. God's not a camper. God didn't touch you to camp with you. God touched you to change you. God ch touched you to reach those people in the valley of decision. You reach that further on, the Bible is very clear. The Bible says the Lord will roar from Zion. Not the picture we have of Jesus. The picture we have is gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Yes, God is a God of love. Yes, God is, is, is love. But my brother, you better understand when it comes to purpose, God is a man of war. Your Bible says that. When it comes to expanding God's kingdom, God, has, uh, God takes no prisoners. Because the only reason Jesus has not come back is why. People can prophesy dates and times and stars align and whatever. Let me tell you, the only reason he hasn't come back is the Bible says he'll come when the number of the Gentiles are fulfilled. That's all God's waiting for. He's waiting for the church to do the job. And if this generation won't, God will wait for the next generation. But God's time frame is not what we think. It's not a calendar month. It's not a planet. It is a number. So when we play church, God has to start a revival again. And then your grandchildren will be part of that revival. But Jesus is not coming back until the number God has in his mind is met. Are you listening to me? That means we need to get on with the job. We have to get on with what matters. We have to reach our friends. We have to reach our colleagues. We have to plunder hell and populate heaven. We have to understand our purpose. Our purpose is not to prophesy from the morning till the evening. You may prophesy, but your purpose is the same as that of Christ, to plunder hell and populate heaven. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Now listen, if you've lost your, 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 your passion to witness to the lost, you've lost your passion for Christ. Yeah. 
you can't be passionate about God and the things of God and you don't reach out to lost people. It's not possible. So I'm a gym hopper. You know what that is? I go from gym to gym for one reason. Because I'll evangelize a gym, run out of sinners, go to the next gym. Because I get bored with Christians like you. I mean, I get bored with Christians. I love you, but you bore me. I'm not insulting you. Because what are you going to say to me? I prayed this morning and the Lord said to me, there's seven angels that are going to do this and this and this. No. I appreciate the Lord. And, and what's the result of that for the person that's in your work that's lost and if he dies and goes to hell? But you want to talk to me about the, the prophetic revelation God is giving you and you're not telling me that God's talking to me about the lost people in your life when everything about Jesus was to reach lost people. Now it becomes a religion. So, so, so when we lose our passion, listen, for the lost, we've lost our passion for Christ. We can color coat it, sugar coat it, however we want to. But the center of what Jesus is doing is to reach lost people. It, God is not willing for any to perish. So after the, the day of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, what was the purpose of that? You shall receive power, Acts 1 verse 8, to be what? Witnesses unto me, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the other parts of the earth. So that church becomes comfortable, the Jerusalem church. God allows persecution because they lost their purpose and they are all scattered and they preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So God who loves his church allows persecution because the church is sitting in a holy bubble and the church never fulfilled the assignment that God called them to fulfill. And that is, as truly as I am God, all the earth must be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the, of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Our job is to reach our world for Jesus Christ. Whether you're a lawyer, a doctor, a dentist, a student, your primary purpose is to reach lost people. And when you lose your primary purpose, you've lost focus of the person of Jesus. I know we don't want to hear this. Because we'll stand in church and we'll have a worship moment and then leave and not reach anybody. Please, you're all intelligent, explain to me what just happened. Because every time Jesus touches people, he says, now give what I've given you. Freely you've received, freely give. He, he, he never makes ministering to the person the end. The woman of the world of Samaria said, go tell your friends. The man of the Gadarenes is an emotional uh, uh, um, He's, he's bound, he's in a cave, he's bound with chains. Jesus delivers him, doesn't have a long conversation with him because if you read the Bible, the conversations Jesus has with men are very short, very direct, and very instructive. The conversations he has with women are totally different. Go do that little Bible study, you'll find it very interesting. When he talks to men, he instructs. When he, when he talks to women, he has a conversation because you are not designed by God for a long conversation. The longer we talk to you, the more we're going to allow you to be messed up. You are not wired for a lengthy conversation. Ask your wife. So God who created you is not going to have this long conversation with you. He's going to say, go, do this, get over it, forgive, pray. Because God is a commander. He doesn't bleed. Women, different story. All the conversations with women are long. With men... He instructs them. What has society done with men? We all have an issue. We all have a problem. We are weak. Inherently, we are taught you are weak. And I understand um, mental health uh, issues. I do, actually. I understand that Elijah, the one day prays fire from heaven, the next day is in the valley of discouragement. I understand that temptation. But what conversation does God have with him? God says, get back into my presence. God says, your job is not done. God says, don't quit now. He feeds him. He says, get back on the mountaintop. Get back into your destiny, etc. Not he camps there and he says, I understand you're emotionally burnt out, etc. God says, no, 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 no. I'm going to feed you. Sleep. Rest. I'm going to feed you. Sleep. Now, Elijah, get back to the mountaintop. Because let me tell you, my brother, God never designed you for the valley. God designed you for the mountaintop. God never created you for defeat. God created you for victory. Come on, shout to Rod. Somebody out today in Jesus' name. So the challenges of life are real, but you were designed by God to overcome them. Not to hide behind your wife's apron.
Thank God if your wife is a prayer, but you can live without a prayer. Oh my word, Jesus. My ministry of my, my, my life is because of my wife's prayer. And is she, really? And if she didn't pray for you? Thank God if she prays for you, but if she doesn't pray for you, does it mean you're in trouble? Ek sien van julle kyk vir my as ek Frans praat. Spaans. Is this look of utter confusion? Okay. Is julle okay? Nee, as jy Afrikaans praat, dan weet ek jy is nog okay. Okay. But I think others have left, Elvis have left the building. So he says, assemble and come together all your nations and gather together all around. Cause your mighty ones to go down, O Lord. Let the nations be awakened and come up to the valley, valley of Josephus. For there I will sit to judge the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle. There's purpose. For the harvest is ripe. Come, go down. For the winepress is full, the vats overflow, for the wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon will grow dark and the stars will diminish their brightness. The Lord also will roar from Zion. What is Zion? The church. The church cannot be silent. The church has to roar. You are the church. The church has to be a voice. You are the salt. You are the light. The church cannot be neutral. The church needs a voice. So if God is going to roar, he's going to roar where? Through you. He's going to restore the roar in you to roar against injustice, to roar against demonic powers. You have the authority as a man. But while you think you are weak, you will not engage in a battle. You need to know who you are in Christ, yes, by the power of the Holy Ghost. But what happens if you feel nothing? You still have to dress up. You still have to show up. You still have to get up. You still have to face your Goliath. And you have to be like Muhammad Ali, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. You're coming down in the second round. You're coming down. You have to be brave. You have to be bold because the Lord is with me. And if God is for me, who can be against me? You cannot doubt who you are as a man of God. You are a mighty man. I said you are a mighty man. I said you are a mighty man. Listen, I said you are a mighty man. Come on, young person. You are a mighty man. Oh, come on. Give him a 10-second praise here today. Listen what then ASB says. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for holy war. Stir up the warriors. Have all the soldiers come forward. You've been calling for soldiers all the time. Have them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am a warrior. Lift your hand and say, I'm a warrior. Say it. Come on. New Living Translation says, say to the nations, far and wide, get ready for war. Now, nobody likes a war. I mean, my generation... 50 and older. How many of you did military conscription? Okay. Yeah. And when you were 16 years old, you got a, a letter in the post, right? And said you, you've been called up to a certain place, right? And you had a number. 803-1245-BG. Burgerlijke gedwongene. I still remember that number. Served two years, did eight camps, was in Angola in 1987-88, fought against the Russians, fought against the Cubans, saw people killed, saw United soldiers who fought with us killed, etc., etc. Saw it. It's not a war I chose. It's a war I was conscripted in. I didn't believe in it. I wasn't saved. But it was a war that I had to answer. Never did we wake up one day and the commander stood up and said, do you feel like battle today? No. We were trained, we were prepared, and we had to show up. Four o'clock in the morning, you had to dress up, even if the whole uh, uh, fire bucket was iced. We understood there's a battle. 
Well, it was an unrighteous battle. I understand that. But we were brainwashed as white South Africans, me, brainwashed that black people are the enemy. Swapu, we were given a target. Okay, I've changed. I'm born again now. All right. So don't look at me like that. <clears throat> what I'm trying to say, it was a war. And you were engaged in that battle every day. And if you lowered your guard, the enemy would take somebody out. We as a church, we think we're on a pleasure boat. This is not a pleasure boat. This is a battleship. We are engaged in a battle, listen, for the soul of humanity. People are perishing. There are multitudes on the valley of decision. My brother, you and I stand between the living and the dead. We have to take our call serious, and we have to raise our hands and open our hearts and answer the call of God to be mighty men, mighty warriors, mighty soldiers of God to fight this just cause that put our Lord and Savior on the cross. You talk about the, 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 the greatest man that ever walked this earth. It was Jesus Christ, no one else. You talk about somebody that displays guts way beyond just spiritual spirituality. It was Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. He sweated great drops of blood. He died for you and me. He never tapped out when he could, but he did it for your salvation. Now, you and I, we are born into that battle. That battle for the redemption of mankind. Because he says, as my father sent me, so sent I you. I'm going to say it a third time. If the lost doesn't matter, we have to question our relationship with God. Because we, when we spend time in the presence of God, we automatically will be stirred to reach people. I go to gym, like I said, and then there's one person that I'm reaching. He's a multi-billionaire um, at one of the most famous food franchises in South Africa. He did, didn't know I'm a pastor, and every time he spoke to me, it was blinkity, 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 blink. You know all those words people say? And I was comfortable with that. I thought, please just don't find out I'm a pastor because I'm going to reach you, Okay. And it's not like I ran away and I felt unsaved because that's how people are in the world. And I just started talking to him. And then one day he asks me, he says, so what is it that you do? I say, um, I'm a salesman. <laughs> he says, what do you sell? I said, eternal life. He says, what do you mean? He said, okay, I'm a pastor. He says, blinkity, blinkity, blink, 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 blink. I can't believe you're a pastor, etc. And I've reached him, led him to the Lord, etc., etc. That's not the issue. The issue is, I wasn't preachy. I wasn't like this Christian that is unrelatable, that now we are pastors and we are so in a different space that people can't relate to us. Listen, we are in this world to reach the people of this world. We are in this world. We are not of this world. We can't live with a halo around. We need to, 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 to be men. So when you play rugby, play it harder. Play with the lion of the tribe of Judah that lives on the inside of you. Roar on that rugby field. Roar in that MMA ring. Pray for the person after. Pray, Lord, please don't let me damage him too much. But uh, 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 thank you, God, that you give me the victory. He's going down in the second row, uh, uh, round or something like that. But just, no, just not permanent damage, right? Not we Christians, and now we negotiate softly. And I'm not talking about corruption and bribery. I'm talking about walking in there as a man. The righteous is better than his neighbor. I'm a mighty man of God. This is my design. This is my calling. I'm not going to lose myself in the pursuit of Christ. I'm going to discover myself. I'm going to be the better version of myself in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to become a tame version. I'm not going to become a watered down version where I'm now a shadow of what I used to be with a lot of hallelujahs. Praise the Lord, my brother. Bless those and whatever. Huh? I mean, Jesus was a friend of the sinners. People would, could, would come and ask who Jesus was. He didn't have 10 bodyguards and, and, and he had three halos around him. He was just Jesus among the people. He was relatable. People had to ask, who is Jesus? 
He wasn't the standout bishop, prophet. He was a man, man of God, son of God, anointed by the Holy Ghost. He lived this life as a man, sinless, but as a man. He overcame temptation as a man. He fulfilled his purpose as a man. He discovered from the word who he was as a young man, 12 years old. And he served his purpose as a man. And when he was betrayed, he never tapped out. When he felt like quitting, he never quit. Because he knew who he was. He knew who God created him to be. Even when his mother doubted him, when his, his sisters doubted him, and they thought he had lost his mind, he said to the disciples, that's not my mother and my brother and my sisters. Those who hear the word and do the word. You see, Jesus never doubted himself. What does this world want? The world wants you to doubt yourself. First, doubt who you are in Christ. Doubt your identity, which is a massive thing in our world today, filtering through our education system. Our minister of education now being the minister of defense. How's that going to work? Praise God in any case. And by the way, I know as she comes to our church often, I spoke to her in the gym the other day before the elections, and I said, this Bella Bill is rubbish. Why are you people passing it? Because I'm not going to sit there and, and pacify politicians because they have, I've done this too long. I'm not two years old. I said, this is ungodly. When COVID came, we sat with the president. I said, how can you close the church? It's unrighteous. The state should not have control over the church. We don't roll over because they say we may not meet. We meet because God tells us to meet. We, 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 we are men of God. I said we're men of God. We stand for God in our generation. No matter what the cost, we stand for God because that's who we are. Not when we feel like it. So, 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 so when I come to Christ, Joel chapter 3 of the Joel chapter 2, and I'm anointed with the Holy Ghost. What does God want from me? God wants the, the mighty man to be awakened. What is the mighty man? The man of purpose, the man of integrity, the man that loves God, the man of war, the man that will serve the purpose of God in his generation like David, the man who doesn't get swept away by this world, the man who doesn't just live by the way, the man who wakes up with purpose and knows this is my assignment, my designation, this is who I am. I don't doubt myself. I'm a man of God. I'm appointed by God, but what's my primary purpose? Why did God wake me up? To reach those people in the valley of decision. To be part of God's plan of redemption. Whether I'm a, a sportsman, an MMA fighter, in the slap competition, slap them and get them saved, Donnie, please, if you are still here. Slap the hell out of them and then lead them to Christ, Okay. After you do the business deal, share your testimony. Share with Christ. Otherwise, what's the purpose, my brother? You make more money, you can't take more money to heaven. You, 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 you have more fame, you can't take fame to heaven. The only thing we can take to heaven are people. But if the church loses its purpose, then the church becomes weak in purpose. And if we all become weak, there's no hope. Because... Being a mighty man of God takes you way beyond your feelings, your emotions, your desires, your self-centeredness. It keeps you on the purpose of God. And I'll tell you, if you want to finish strong, you need to be a man of purpose all the days of your life. 94, I was in Toronto, and I had a vision. Changed my life forever. When the revi uh, Toronto uh, revival broke out, a little church of 400 people, I flew there, heard about a move of God, stood in a line for hours to get into that little building. One night I'm sitting in that building and they pray for the people afterwards and I went for prayer. And this man, a very well-known pastor, which I chose to pray for me because I don't let anybody pray for me. I chose for him to pray for me. As he laid his hands upon me, I was in the spirit. I fell over, yes. Not a courtesy drop. I fell in the power and the spirit of God. And as I was in, 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 in the presence of God, I felt the Spirit of God. I felt my, my spirit actually leave my body. And the next minute I was over this valley and I saw multitudes and multitudes of people pressing in to the end of that valley. 
darkness in the valley. And they were like zombies, expressionless. At the end, I saw these two huge gates. And I heard this hollow voice echoing over this valley. The gates are too narrow. The gates are too narrow. And I knew I was seeing people pressing into hell to be damned for eternity. The vision stopped there. That night, needless to say, I was perturbed, disturbed all night, could not sleep. I thought, God, what are you showing me? People are going to hell, but there must be a solution. Could not sleep. I was wrestling, seeing the reality of people dying without Christ, that they are eternally damned. Yes, your uncle. Yes, your aunt. Yes, your friend. Yes, your colleague. He may be a good person, but my brother, if he's not born again, he's not going to make heaven. The next night I went to the meeting again, stood in the queue for hours. Again, I asked that man to pray for me. Again, I was in the Spirit of the Lord. This time, the Spirit of God lifted me a bit higher over that same valley. And on the edge of that valley, I saw a massive rock protruding like this. And then I saw a lion, the most magnificent male lion from Africa or from wherever, run onto that rock and stomp his feet like that, standing, looking over that valley. And he threw his head back like that, and he roared. And as he roared, I saw light come from that from the one side sweeping over the valley and I heard enough 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 and I began to see people turn away from the gates of hell and I knew what my assignment was to wake up the mighty men to my wake up the church of Jesus Christ to plunder hell and populate heaven oh come on if you are going to be one of those mighty men jump to your feet and give the Lord a warrior cry a warrior praise come on Come on, praise Him for a moment. I shared this with somebody, and I do believe in prophets. Not believe in prophets, but believe in legitimate prophets. I shared the scripture with a person that was a true prophet or this vision. He said, what you saw is in the Bible. When, when, when revival hit our country, people got stuck in a manifestation. Please listen now. Listen. And I got touched there as well. Our church in Bloomingdale was birthed in revival. Seven months every single night. That's where CRC was birthed. We had revival every week. Then the Holy Spirit began to deal with me about what is this all about? People came, filled, laughed, rolled. At one stage we had old McDonald's farm there where people would get filled with the Holy Ghost or whatever and it was like... Now, some of the older Pentecostals will remember that. Like, I'll never get the guy gets to the platform, and it's like, you know, we are so free in the spirit, and we're just waiting for God to talk to us, and it's like, it's, it's, it's a lot of fire, but a lot of wildfire, and this guy comes down, leader in the church, and it, it was a small building, and he climbs on the edge of the platform, and he goes like, sits like a chicken, and he goes, <laughs> he says, it's a new day, it's a new day. I say, okay, that's enough now, that's enough now, that's enough now. That's enough now. Let's turn this thing the way it should go. Let's train our people that their lives have a purpose. And the purpose is the same as that of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Son of Man has come to say, seek and save that which is lost. Paul says, Christ came into this world to save sinners of whom I am chief. So, 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 so when, we, when, we, when, when, when we talk about the anointing, the anointing that works miracles, etc., and the loss does not feature, that move becomes questionable. It's a huge statement, but listen to me. Because with the move of God on the day of Pentecost, what happened? 3,000 people got saved. Then daily the Lord added to the church. Then uh, the, the number of disciples increased. Then the number of disciples multiplied. So while they embraced their purpose... They were unstoppable. They turned the world upside down because everybody was focused on the mission, which is what? To seek and save the lost at any cost, which is for every believer to be a soul winner, that your primary purpose is to be a soul winner. Not, it's a department in the church. Everybody. The way God roars through the church is through you, roaring to your world, your family, your, your, your hospital, wherever you are. You are God's missionary. You are God's ambassador. But you have to answer that call. Because the Bible says you wake up those mighty men. 
The mighty men were sitting there. The church was full. Now God comes to the prophet and he says, wake the men up. Tell the men it's time for war. Get the men focused on their purpose, which is not to build their businesses. You know, my brother was a billionaire, um, and his business is now worth billions. Uh, shopping centers all over South Africa, etc. 49, he contracted cancer. And uh, 51, he was dead. And before he died, very spiritual man, but made a lot of money. And, and before he died, he would always say to me, ask me two questions in Afrikaans, but I'll translate to English. He would say, do you think I still have a chance? Three months before he died, I knew he was going to die. And I lied to him for three months for his sake. The second thing he said to me is, daar is nog so baie dinge wat ek vir die Heere wil doen. There's still so many things I want to do for God. And I would say to him, Vim, do it while you live. Righteous man supported all the building projects, etc. But somewhere he got caught up in pursuing business as his primary purpose, which it never can be. Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God's righteousness. So, 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 so if, if your business does not um, serve or, or exist to serve the purpose of God's kingdom, why must God bless it? Why? If your church doesn't exist to reach lost people, why must God be interested? Why? You think God is just yet to give us a good time? Just let's come and feel loved? You've been loved and you, you want some more love? Come here, let me argue, but then get going. I just want to feel better with myself. Now you need a slap up the side of, uh, of something. You, you, you don't need somebody to tell you again how wonderful you are, how beautiful you are, how fantastic you are, etc. Just accept what God says about you. Get off your, your backside and get on with what God called you to do. And make this world a better place in Jesus' name. Amen? Because even with our children, and I have three and seven grandchildren, there comes a time where you have to tell that child, walk for yourself. Wipe your own backside, feed yourself, get on with it, make your bed. But then as Christians, we come and say, I didn't feel love today when Apostle Theo preached. What are you talking about? What? Now I have to choose my words carefully. When, 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 when I stood in Angola and, and that commander said to us, we're attacking to, we have to go into battle tomorrow and we're going to lose lives, etc., etc. I couldn't go there and say, I don't feel loved. Where'd, it's a question that we as men become so sensitive. That men get offended in church easier than women. Oh my, you hurt me today by saying, what? The project fun. What the, blinkity blink, 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 blink. What van praat jy? Van van jylle harkies is nou seer van wat ek gesê, want jylle dink, dis nie geestlik nie. Maar kyk hoe ongeestlik is jy, want jy sit nou daar met die hart wat is soos, nonsense. Hmm? Why did we allow ourselves to become so sensitive as men? And we are men of war. In any battle, there's no place for sentiment. Listen. Zero. Do we hurt? Yes. But then we have our brothers there that pick us up, not that stab us and leave us behind. 
We are brothers. Not bro- brothers that will weep with us, but they weep with us to get us back on our feet. They don't weep with us to keep us dependent on them. They, 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 get, you, they get you treated so you can come back to the front line and fight. Some of you have left the fight. Some of you, the fight left you. And, and, and for some reason, you feel justified in that. Like Gideon did when he sat in the wine press. And God comes to him and he says, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. And he says, But God, if you're with me, why this and why, why, blah, 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 blah. And the Lord doesn't even have a conversation with him. Have you read that? If it was Mary, he would have a conversation. But Gideon, he's not even listening. He says, Go in this might of yours and save Israel. Get on with it. Get on with it. Why can God say that to you and me? Because God made you. God designed you. God created you. You may fall, but you will rise again. You may be knocked down, but you will rise again. I'll tell you why. Because it's in your DNA. That's who God made you to be. It's who you are. You cannot stay down. You cannot stay defeated. You cannot stay bound. You cannot stay lost. You have to roar. You have to get the roar. Get the roar back in your heart. Get the roar. Come on, some of you need to roar. Some of you need to lift your voice. Even if it's just a who, 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 whatever. Let a sound come from your heart today. Let a sound come from your heart today. Wake up the mighty men. 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 Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake from your sleep. And Christ will give you light. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Allow God to restore the roar in you today. But you have to accept it today. You have to stand up today on the inside and the outside as well. And you just need to let that lion's roar come back again. I know some of you have been hurt. Some of you have been through tragedy. When my brother went through that thing, the devil tried to take the roar out of me. Uh, One of my grandchildren has been going through a medical challenge like you can't believe. The devil has tried to take the roar out of my daughter and out of other people. I said, no, my girl, you roar. You roar. You go there and you stand and you roar. You're a lion. You roar against that devil. You roar against injustice. You roar against whatever life throws against you. You stand your ground and you roar. Come on. Some of you, you may think it's funny today. Just begin to like a lion that's been wounded. Come on. You've licked your wounds, but God's healing you. You've been down, but you are getting up today in the name of Jesus Christ. Just begin to grunt as a lion, I'll tell you. The devil will run. The devil will leave you. Demonic powers will be broken. But there's got to be a sound that comes out of you. You can be silent no more. One one, one of the first signs of a wounded lion that's been attacked by other lions when he lies under a bush and uh, and he he licks his wounds and he recovers, the sign that that lion has recovered, a sound that comes out of him. Before he even picks himself up, he begins to grunt. (laughs) He hasn't got his roar yet, but he, he's trying to find his voice again. You need to find your voice again. You need to find your roar again. God wants to restore your roar in your marriage, in your business, in your career, in your finances, in your church, over your, 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 your health. You need to restore the roar. Come on, you need to take, you need to claim back the territory. Take back the territory the devil has taken from you. In the name of Jesus Christ, like every lion, and let the lion of the tribe of Judah get tall on the inside of you and begin to walk your boundary again. Go and patrol your dominion again. You walk as that man, strong in the Lord and the power of his might, and you take back what the devil has taken from you. Come on, can I have somebody give a roar, a roar, a roar, a roar, a roar. Come on, roar! Roar! Come on, restore the roar.
Just lift your hands with me this morning. Come on, just lift it, lift it, lift it. Lift it, lift it, lift it. It doesn't matter what you've been through, where you are, God's there, God's on your side, and the greater one lives on the inside of you. But you have to allow the lion of the tribe of Judah. It's not the picture people have of God, but he is a lion. He's the lamb, but he's also the lion. He's love, but he's also a God of war. He's both. This is a time for war. Wake up the mighty men. It's time for war. Come on, CFC. Your best days are ahead of you. 45 glorious years, but your best days are ahead of you. Your best days are yet to come. It doesn't matter how many times you've fallen, how low you have sunk. It doesn't matter what you have done. Your past matters not. What matters today is that you hear the voice of the lion of the tribe of Judah and you allow that lion to begin to roar back on the inside of you. Allow God to restore the roar in your heart. Come on, in the name of Jesus, just praise Him one more time. Come on, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice. The devil has designed this world to steal the roar from you. Some of you have lost your roar because you have run away from God. This is us talking as men. Some of you have lost yourself. Some of you walked away from God. Some of you today, if you died, you don't know that you'll go to heaven. You need to come back to Jesus. Because you can, on the outside, make as if everything is okay. But inside, you're broken and lost. Some of you are lying down on the inside. There's one person who will lift you up. His name is Jesus. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. No one moving now, please. You've come here this morning and say, Pastor, if I die today, I don't even think I'll go to heaven. Maybe you serve God, but like the prodigal son, you've walked away from your father's house. You see, vandaag op uitnodiging. Je hebt geen verhouding met die Heere nie. Maak jy nie een slechte mens, nie. Maak jy een verloore mens. Jy is verloore. God soek jou. En vandag moet jy jou leven vir die Heere gee. You're standing in this place today. You say, I need a fresh start with God, a new beginning. I've lost myself in this journey of life. I want to pray for you. I want to help you find your way back to God. But you have to make that decision. You have to man up and give yourself back to Jesus. Open your heart and allow Jesus to take his rightful place all over this place while men are praying for men. You say that today. I need a fresh start with God, a new beginning. I want to surrender my life to Christ. If that's your desire, unashamedly, wherever you are, slip up your hand. I want to say a prayer for you quickly. Raise it up all over this place. Lift it up high. Now, raise it. Raise it. Hundreds of you. Raise it. Raise it. And if you have to think about it, you've not made a choice. I'll tell you this about Jesus. I was taught about Jesus incorrectly. First in a denominational church, then in a charismatic church. Like people think Jesus begs them. Jesus is not a beggar. He's the risen Christ, the Savior. And he gives you an opportunity to get right with God. Before I pray, if not yet, raise your hand. Slip your hand up quickly now. In Jesus' name, raise it up. Say, include me in that prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you, bless you, bless you. Many of you now, please, look at me. Last thing, we're going to restore the roar this way. Now guts, Jesus went to the cross publicly for you. You're going to accept Christ publicly and come back to Christ publicly. So if you raised your hand, two things. Or you brought a friend here today, and you are that brother that will bring your friend to Christ, then you do the right thing. My brother brought me to Jesus Christ. Otherwise, I wouldn't be saved. Andrew brought Peter to Jesus. You can bring your friend to Christ today. So all over this place, if you raised your hand, 
you want to get right with God. I want you to leave your seat unashamedly because as men, we are not ashamed, right? Leave your seat wherever you are. Walk down the aisle closest to you. Come stand with me right down the front at the altar. We are going to pray together. Come on, let's cheer them on as they come. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Many more of you walk, 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 walk. It's not a walk of shame. It's a walk of freedom, walk of salvation. Come on, walk, 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 walk. Come my brother. I don't care how long you've been bound by that alcohol. You come. Come. Come, come, come. Come on, clap, 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 clap. Walk, 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 walk. Don't wrestle God in your seat. Come, my brood, man. Hey, hey, my brood, come, 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 Jou hart klopt in een miljoen mijlen hier. God praat met jou, je bent in jou hart. Dit is jou oomlik, dit is jou tijd, dit is jou hier. Kom, 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 kom. Come on. Come on, there's more people. There's more people, I'm going to wait for you. Ask your friend again, put your friend, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, every person matters. Ask your friend again. And if you want to get down here, get right with God, leave your seat. We're going to sing that two more times. Leave your seat and walk. It's a walk of freedom. I was bound by alcohol, marijuana, mandrax, you name it. Jesus saved me from it all um, when I gave my life to Christ. You don't have to stay in that prison. And you don't have to stay in your prison of guilt. Uh, I don't care how long you've done whatever. There's freedom. And forgiveness for you today. So you want to receive God's forgiveness? You leave your seat and you come. Come on, come on. Come on, you still want to come leave your seat and come. This is now where God kicks in. Come, 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 come. Walk, 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 walk. Come on, come on, come on. There's a voice in your heart. There's a voice, a voice, a voice. There's an urgency in your heart. It's the Holy Ghost. You come. Walk, 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 walk. Walk. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Now, I'll tell you this. Listen to me because I'm talking to men. I respect that you came. Okay, I don't know you, but each one of you. When I gave my life to Christ, um, I felt nothing, but everything changed. I walked in, gave my life to Jesus, and I walked out a changed man. If you look at my face, there was no emotion. I think people who looked at me, and that's where we make a mistake with men. We look for a visible expression. Strong men. Strong men are different. Strong men. God works in them and people will think nothing is happening. That's how God deals with strong men. And I'll tell you what, God loves strong men. Because strong men changes this world. Weak men criticize strong men. Strong men. Changes this world. So I, I can't, I didn't even get to the first page of my message but this is not carnal. We don't talk about uh, uh, dominating women, etc. We're talking about being a man. Being comfortable in who God created me to be. And not sugarcoating it with what you call spirituality, but which has made most of the men in the church useless. Yeah.
If I said most and you offended by that, I didn't mean you. And by the way, why do you get offended? Why the heck do men sit in a church and it's like, oh, I didn't like that. Leave a blik school. Why? Why it was ooit daar uitgekom? Dat man so amper sikker verkeerde woord. Dat man so optree. Waar is dit? Wat er die samenleving gedoen aan mans? That we so sensitive. No. Broken? Yes. Messed up by sin? Yes. But when you give your life to Jesus, He saves you. And then the journey of discipleship starts where we walk with you. And we stand with you. And we say to you, it's okay, man. Some people get saved and God delivers them from everything. Other people have to outgrow certain things. And we have to give space for God's grace. Not have this heavy-handed preach holiness down to the point where men feel guilty. Lead them out of their sin, man. It's a journey of sanctification. So when we make it this heavy thing, it's like men think, I can't do that. I can't do that. You're going to outgrow all your nonsense. Stay in the game and get purpose. And when you have purpose, I'd rather have you smoke a pipe um, and be a member of my church than be a spiritual gossiper. Now, I don't mean smoke a pipe. I say, I say, Amen. Put your hand on your heart. Let me pray with you. Pray this prayer with me, all of you, please. Pray it. Pray it. Say, Jesus, you've touched my life today, and I'm responding to you right now by opening my heart to you and allowing you to take your rightful place as my Lord and Savior. You paid the ultimate price when you died for my sin on the cross. I believe with all my heart. You did that for me. Then you went to hell and you faced God's judgment in my place. But you rose again and you are alive. You overcame death and hell. And now I ask you, save me, Jesus. Wash me in your blood. Forgive my sin. Give me the power to live for God. A new life and a new journey with you I receive forgiveness of all sin and I thank you that you heal my heart and you break every addiction and every hold of the devil over my life right now I let go of my past I let go of my shame and I embrace a brand new life in Christ Jesus, my Lord, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I'm heaven bound. I'm forgiven for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us during this episode of Living Life with Dr. Theo and Bev Volmerantz. We hope that through this inspired teaching, you had an encounter with God. If you enjoy the teaching ministry of Apostle Theo and Dr. Bev Volmerans and would like to enjoy more resources, we hope you will visit our website at www.christianfamilychurch.co.za or for our American listeners, www.christianfamilychurchsa.com. Thank you.